And moving on to the fixed income market, a moderate sell-off by foreign investors and weak demand by local institutions have seen bond yields rise in Nigeria, 3 to 20 year bond debts now trade at yields between 13.2 and 13.4 percent. Meanwhile, high liquidity is driving demand for treasury bills, pushing yields for short-term government securities to below 11 percent. Right now we're joined in the studios by Kingsley Okereke, a fixed income dealer at Diamond Bank to talk us through the latest activity in the fixed income market. Kingsley, thank you for joining us. Um, like I did mention there, hey, it, it, it's a really a, a tale of two markets there for the for the T bills and for the bonds. Your take particularly on the bonds where we're seeing very little interest from foreign investors also, and likewise little interest from local investors even though we're seeing those bond yields hi move higher. I'm hearing that um, the locals are really playing, are really adopting a wait and see attitude right now. They get the sense that those yields could still take higher. Yes, um, the locals are actually um Playing the wait and see, and being very, very, very bit cautious. You know, the skepticism is in the market. Uh, we saw uh, the bullish trend actually started last week, late last week, and it has. I mean, rather the bearish trend has actually eaten up into this week. What really is governing that is um, foreign investors have actually reframed for the market because of the uh, U.S. government shutdown and the debt ceiling tussle between Congress and the. Uh, and the executive arm. So with right. that, with reduced participation as for them, we know and we've seen yields move up to 13.8% in time past. So they are just waiting to see where they can get best value from the market, basically. And that's right. why it has um, been protracted to this period. Right. And going forward, it might likely protract until all these global sentiments are actually all eased right. out in the market. All right, talking about the global um, issues and what that could mean for our fixed nickel market, we do know that over the last two to three years, the foreign investors have become major players, if you like, in the fixed income market. And with the, the with tapering coming up later on, at some point, one expect that is is likely to happen. So what do you think this could mean for the dynamics of our bond market? Do you think we could see yields move into a, a new normal level, if you like? Yes, that could happen if the tapering. Uh, the FOMC meet to be have one this month. And um, well, in my view, yes, they might, they might, because of the jitters it caused the last time they, they filtered into the market that they, they were going to taper, and the jitters it caused, we saw uh, a lot of market lose a lot of value. You know, they might, they might be, that might be a bit of a cautious move for them to not to spike markets and try to manage the situations on both sides. Yes, they will taper, but they will make it at such level that market can price in that taper rate and it will not cause unnecessary shocks to the system because it's going to hamper global uh, prospects. So they will try to make sure that the impact it has minimal effect and also has a better effect for them. Because as I said, they want to see positive indicators in their market before they will taper and in the economy at large. All right, we're seeing a lot of liquidity in the money market right now. Um, Interbank yields, uh, interbank rates have now come down quite a bit. TBL yields have also come down because of the demand pressure that that liquidity is driving. What's your outlook for TBLs? Do you, do you think we're going to see them settle at the current levels? It's now below 11% in terms of yields. Yes, uh, you see the short end of the market, you see about 10.8, 10.5 levels. And the longer end of the market too, about that level, but a bit of a bit of the treasury bills are still trading at the lower limit of 11%. But yes, with the, the current liquidity, I foresee yields dwindling down further. Um, also, we like yesterday, the market opened with a net position of close to about 600 billion. So we saw more activities in that light. Um, going forward, um, with the level of liquidity in the system, I foresee CBN coming out with OMO issuances. They right. came out with one yesterday. Uh, they sold about 74 billion of a uh, 70 billion which they offered at a sub rate of 12% and 12.2%. Mm. Even with that, we still have a maturity as of today of 99.7 billion hitting the system. So CBN will have to look for a more aggressive strategy of taking out this liquidity to create stability in the market. Perhaps raise rates again, you think? Well, Unlikely, right? well anything could happen. You know, he has also brought out a policy on the FX surrounding. Uh, changing the WDAS to the RDAS, you know, to reduce the level at which the dollar is being utilized in the system, basically. Mm -hmm. Western Union money transfer now is being uh, issued out in Naira currency and no longer in the dollar currency. He's trying to de-dollarize de the market, mm -hmm. you know, and all that. And he also issued, uh, in that same circular, he has given a maximum limit to which BDCs can also 
uh, go out at the auction. Yesterday was the first implementation of that, and yes, market is trying to get used to that. So we, at in coming trading sessions, we see that the, the process will be fine-tuned better, and but you see stability. But isn't it a bit surprising that we're seeing those OMO uh, auctions again after the aggressive tightening we saw with the um, with the move ar around public sector deposits uh, at the. Um, um, the, the, not the last MPC, the yeah, July yeah, MPC. Yeah, yeah. So, your thoughts about the fact that we're now seeing OMO again? Of course, that comes at the cost for the central bank, and Definitely. many people will argue that the reason they did what they did then was to reduce the cost of, of, of monetary policy for the central bank. Yes, you know, the truth is that prior to this point, we've had series of OMOs, you know, and the effect is, you know, it's going to take a while before they're able to cushion out this effect to bring out a lasting solution to the market. Even in this current uh, fourth quarter, we have, virtually this month, we have OMO maturities every week. Mm. And going forward, we have a lot of liquidity. Out of like a four trillion, we have a four, a 2.6 trillion so there's no, only in this quarter. There's no way they're so, going you know, they, 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 will have to they will have to continue. They will markets. have to continue at the premium in which they are paying. In the first, when uh, the liquidity was elevated in the market, about, about 400 billion, we saw them bring out that UMO, and it was a new sale because market was yearning for higher yields, best return. So, um, going so that's why you saw maybe the stop risk around 12% levels yesterday. So, going forward, they may have to continue and also look for a more sustainable. Uh, strategy because right. they are trying to make the banks, you know, learn to the real economy and do the business which they are meant to do, which is an intermediary between surplus and deficit funds. Right. And of course, they've been very aggressive around that yes. recently. But a quick thought on inflation, your thoughts about where, where the importance of that in investing in bonds in Nigeria. I get the sense that we don't see the markets react to those inflation numbers when they do come out. And I know, yes, if you're investing in bonds, it's more of expected inflation as opposed to the spot inflation. But Given the outlook for inflation, everyone's saying that we're likely to stay at below 10% for the rest of the year and perhaps even into the early part of next year. Your thoughts about how the bond market reacts to that? Well, in time past, we just used to see a, uh, just a little reaction, a momentary reaction when the inflation figure comes out, depending on whether it's high or lower. But, it, but that has been discarded of recent because people don't see inflation as a barometer. It's dropped to 8.2 currently. And that was because of the reduction in food prices and all that. But um, bond for bonds, it's mostly of the ex the global trends that surround the market and information hitting the system as to uh, internal or external. So that is what has been driving the market. The foreign players have been the ones that have driven our yields to these levels that we see it. So you know, uh, definitely, it's whatever is obtainable on their own end that actually governs the market because they are the major players on the, as opposed to what we usually have in period, uh, mm. periods. Mm. So, so, so for me, I think going forward, you just have to look at the market in detail, analyze uh, the economic indications, both local and foreign, and be able to pinpoint where best value can be obtained in the market and go and uh, cover niche for yourself so that you can be able to make the rip the returns on your investment. Let's talk a bit about the Naira and what it means for the bond market. Recently we've seen renewed volatility there. Um, we thought there was some calm after the MPC, but now we're seeing it spike to about 162, I believe, yeah. in the interbank market. Yeah. What, what, what does that mean for fixed income for you? Because uh, clearly foreign investors are, are major players. Now we know that they're a bit on the sidelines, and we've continued to see weakness in the Naira. One gets the sense that they will continue to stay out of Nigerian bonds. Yes, the weakness in the Naira you've seen is actually as an impact of the uh, RDAS that is now in the market. The very day in which the policy came out, we saw massive dollar sales, okay, by traders because, uh, you know, it was a system in which market, you know, we came out of that phase and WDAS was very effective. But CBN is looking, as I said, to de-dollarize the market such that the dollar does not come become an alternate currency. So uh, initially, yeah, we saw an appreciation on that day, uh, but later days we've seen depreciation, we've seen more demand for the dollar and all that. So. For me, I, I think, yes, it just closed yesterday about 16198. So for me, I see that uh, there's going to be a bandwidth. It's going to be hovering between 159 to 162 levels. And I don't think that is really such a bad one for them to come in. You know, it's just for you to strategically look at the market and obtain mm -hmm. where value can be most gotten from. If the tapering continues, yes, you will see them come into the market because definitely they won't be looking to reduce their value at risk. Mm -hmm. But if the tapering is going to be stopped, even if it's going to be at a minimum level and gradually unwind. But uh, with that, you will see them cautiously 
going out of the market. In the